Hello, this is White Wolf on Atsigan here at Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont. And uh, I know I haven't been making a whole lot of YouTube videos lately, but uh, it's because I've been so busy uh, here with the Institute. Uh, I've been also doing a lot of uh, filming on uh, full DVD sets and podcasts and all that stuff can be found on uh, waysofthewildinstitute.com. Uh, so between that, teaching, planning, emails, phone calls, everything else, um, yeah, quite busy. But the uh, apprenticeship program just wrapped up here for uh, July. Uh, so that was a uh, three, three week intensive. But today what I want to do is just kind of show you a little video here, very simple video, on, uh, on how to make a, uh, a table uh, in a wilderness situation uh, using no cordage. Okay. Um, so it's just, uh, like I said, simple tool, simple skill to learn, but it comes in uh, handy, especially when you're in the uh, wilderness areas, uh, especially woodland areas, uh, you know, and you've got all your needs taken care of, you got your shelter, you got your water, you got your fire, all right, you got some food, um, you know, you got some basics taken care of. Now you're looking for some comforts, or maybe you're just out camping, all right? You don't carry a table with you in your backpack. Most people don't. Um, they get kind of bulky and heavy after a while. So when you're out here, utilize your natural materials to make them. But for any of you who have actually made natural cordage before, you understand that uh, it takes a little bit of work. Um, it takes a little preparation, a little bit of time. Cordage is very precious out here in the wilderness areas. Uh, a lot of people take for granted cordage. Uh, any kind of rope, twine, things like that. Most people take that for granted. So you actually get out here and you start harvesting the materials from the land and actually creating your own cordage. Um, it's hard to fathom how difficult and time consuming it can be. Especially if you're looking for long, sturdy lengths. So you want to preserve your cordage as much as possible. And so you need to learn how to build things uh, as much as possible without using the cordage that you have. Okay, and so that is uh, what this table is about. It's about how to build the table without using cord without using cordage. So let's take a look at how we do that. First thing you're going to need are trees, and the length of your table will be determined by how far apart your trees are. So I'm going to use these two trees right here, and they are about six feet apart uh, from the outsides end to end. Next thing you're going to need is poles of decent integrity. Okay, so just make sure that uh, your poles are not filled with rot, and that they will withstand whatever kind of weight you want to put on your table. So don't get poles that are sopping wet and falling to pieces, but that does not mean that you have to go out and harvest green poles. There's plenty of seasoned poles in the wilderness standing or laying on the ground. So get yourself two of them. That will be the length of your table. The next thing you're going to want to look for are Y sticks. And again, these need to be of good integrity, not something that's falling apart. So just find yourself some sticks that form a Y pattern. And you're going to make sure that when you get your Y sticks, and again, you want four of them, you want to make them as tall as your table is going to be off the ground. So if you want your table about waist height, you want Y sticks that are also about waist height. Next, you're going to get uh, straight sticks that are going to make up the width of your table. So this is actually going to be your table top. You don't have to have a saw. You can break these. All right. The straighter they are, 
the better it's going to be. Also make sure that uh, you knock off any nubbins and stuff that uh, happen to be sticking up off of your sticks, which would be the, uh, the nubbins coming out from uh, old branches. And that'll give you a smoother tabletop. Now what you're going to do is you're going to lean your Y sticks, just like these here, up against the trees that you have chosen. Simply lean them. And there you can see the other one on the other side. And after you lean your Y sticks against your tree, you're going to take your pole and you're going to place your pole. You're going to wedge the pole inside the mouth of the Y. And because the weight of the pole pushes down on the Y stick, and the Y stick is angled to the ground, it creates a nice sturdy foundation for your table. So here you can see the four Y sticks propped up at angles against the trees, and then the poles wedged right in there. Now what I like to do is to actually dig the Y sticks into the ground just a little bit. It gives them a footing so that they don't slip out. This is really not so important if you've got good soft ground, uh, but if you have some gravelly ground, something that's a bit harder and drier, it definitely helps to keep them in position. So this right here is your basic foundation for your table. It's your table runners and your table legs. All right, so far, no rope included. Then you take your poles and you simply lay them across your crossbars. However they fit, the easiest way, so that they're smooth and even. So you can see here, the width of the table, length of the table, all supported by your Y sticks, foundational poles, lay your logs across, no cordage involved, very simple. Nothing hard about it. Hardest thing you're going to encounter is breaking all your poles. Now, let's see how much weight it holds. So I took that, uh, that log and that stump, put it on there, and you can see it's holding quite well for nothing but these skinny Y sticks. Leaning up against the trees with your poles. No cordage, holds plenty of weight for anything you want to put on there. So there you have it. Quick easy video on how to build a natural table in a wilderness setting using no cordage, uh, no tools whatsoever besides your own two hands. Um, you don't have to use saws, you don't have to use knives, hatchets, uh, you know this stuff is readily available in woodland areas. Uh, find it, break it into the pieces you want, use leverage, angles, put it all up and you got yourself a table. Um, it's uh, really nice easy 
item of comfort out here, so to speak. You can cook on this table. Uh, those of you who have uh, been following my uh, website, waysofthewildinstitute.com, um, and following the, um, uh, a lot of the images and stuff I put on there, you'll notice that uh, I've created uh, fires on these tables as well, table fires. Uh, so your fire is actually elevated off the ground. You don't have to kneel in the mud the whole time to uh, do your fire work. Uh, you can actually, you know, stand up, cook on the fire, warm yourself by the fire, uh, whatever. Uh, you can make these tables any size you want to. Little teeny tables to really large tables. I've made tables um, using heavier Y sticks, heavier poles, uh, trees that were wider apart. Uh, so I've made some really heavy duty tables and I've actually put my bedding on top of there. Uh, wet ground, mud, whatever, uneven ground, build yourself a table like this. Put your bedding on top of there and get on there and sleep at night. Uh, you can actually take a tarp, tie a rope between the two trees, put your tarp over it in A-frame, right over your table, and slip your, uh, your sleeping gear in there, you know, put a bunch of uh, leaves if you want to, right on top of uh, your table, so you get a nice loft for bedding, get yourself on top of that loft, and uh, go to sleep. You're protected from the rain, uh, you're off the ground. You know, it's, it's a very, very practical, extremely handy uh, skill to know in the wilderness. So it's not just a table for, you know, working with and maybe putting a fire on. Um, but <clears throat> you can also, <coughs> pardon me, you can also use these tables for, you know, shelter methods. So use your imagination. Uh, I've built multiple layer tables before. Uh, so I'll have my, uh, my table, just like I have here, and then uh, put my, uh, my leaf debris on top of there, put my bedding on top of there, then I'll build another table on top of that, and I'll cover that with heavy, heavy leaf debris, mud, moss, whatever, good two and a half feet. <clears throat> now I have a waterproof roof. Uh, okay, so use your imagination. When you're out here in the wilderness, that's, that's the key. All right, to figuring out what to do with what materials. Be creative. Tap into that creative, passionate aspect of yourself. Always ask. Anytime you're walking around, anytime you see something, ask, what could I use that for? Is there anything that I could use that for out here? Uh, when you're living out here, when you're surviving out here, whatever it happens to be, never just go for a wander. All right? When you're going someplace, always keep your eye out for things that might be handy a certain rock, a certain shaped stick, a Y stick, you know, a V stick, um, you know, anything and everything that could be practical to your needs. Keep your awareness open, otherwise you miss so much out here. Walking through the wilderness is, is like, it's better than walking through a, a big box store, department stores, food stores, right? the stuff is everywhere. Tools, medicines, foods, Everything you need is out here. The only thing that limits you from finding it is your own knowledge banks. Right? And the only thing that limits you from being able to create with what you find is, again, the limitations you put on your own creative sources. So, if you want to explore deeper uh, the wilderness ways, outdoor living ways, spirituality, um, philosophy, all kinds of stuff, um, come up here to Ways of the Wild Institute or come down if you're north of us. All right? We have classes year-round, um, lots of stuff, check out the schedule. Uh, if you can't make courses, if you can't make workshops, uh, I put a lot of courses and workshops on uh, full-length DVDs. So you can purchase a DVD set, bring it into your own home, put it in your library, uh, and you can take the course right there. Okay, in the comfort of your own home or your office. It doesn't get a whole lot easier than that. Uh, for those of you who want short lessons, I have podcasts. Again, downloadable podcasts. Click on these and you get a, an instant link and you can watch the podcast right in your office, lunch hour, you know, at home, whatever. So we try to make these things as practical as possible and available to a wide range of people. So again, this is White Wolf Fanatics again here at Ways of the Wild Institute in Vermont. I thank you for watching, thank you for your interest, and thank you for your support. Willem Allison.
Be well and happy.